Hi, this is Mike Elliott, and you're watching a CEO Live executive interview. In this episode, we'll be talking to Mr. Stephen Squires. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Quantum Materials Corporation. Quantum Materials and its wholly owned subsidiary, Solterra Renewable Technologies, manufactures and commercializes quantum dot technology products. Quantum Materials is a publicly traded company listed on the OTCQB under ticker symbol QTMM. Good afternoon, Stephen. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. In a recent press release, you cited the 2012 Quantum Dot Global Forecast, which predicts total sales of Quantum Dots to reach $7.48 billion by 2022. So uh, to start off with, could you just tell us about Quantum Dots in general and their place in the nanotech, biotech, and energy fields? Certainly. Um, quantum dots are basically atomic crystals. Um, they have many unique features that are uh, uh, the result of quantum confinement. Um, so they work as a semiconductor and they also um, have fluorescing properties that uh, make them quite unique for applications in the nanobio field. Um, currently, most of the um, assays or diagnostic assay applications are being serviced with fluorescent dyes. The fluorescent dyes um, tend to get photo bleached, so they don't stay bright for a long time. Um, and they also don't allow uh, the, the person doing the diagnostic work to be able to do multiplexing. Um, with the tetrapod quantum dots that we produce, they can actually use our uh, tetrapods in place of the fluorescent dyes. That allows them to be able to use a uh, one of their specimens over multiple times to be able to get a lot more uh, data from their specimen. And with multiplexing, it allows them to be able to do much more analysis so they can actually isolate different tumors or different cells in that assay. So we're finding that there's a you know, great demand in that field where the, the quantum dots just provide a more enhanced ability to be able to do analysis. Um, in the solar sector, the big uh, shift uh, to quantum dots is yet to come, and that primarily quantum dots offers the ability to be able to make a solar cell much more efficient in uh, com uh, energy conversion, but at the same time be able to produce a solar cell at much lower cost. So our uh, scientists right now are working to be able to really extract the optimum performance out of the quantum dots so that we can have the highest conversion efficiency possible. Um, what's really important in the solar sector is that the theoretical potential conversion efficiency from traditional silicon solar cells is about 30 percent. Um, it's been proven that the theoretical conversion efficiency for a tetrapod quantum dots or quantum dots in general in solar cells is about 66 percent. So there's a, there's a great amount of untapped uh, conversion efficiency potential there. And that's what we're really focusing on. We think that the, the potential within the next 18 to 24 months to have a 20% efficient uh, solar cell using quantum dots is a realistic goal. Um, so when you get to that conversion efficiency and the low cost for manufacturing the solar cells, you really get a paradigm shift in the whole energy uh, equation to where then solar can compete on a levelized field with natural gas and other traditional energy sources. And we think that's what it's gonna take for solar to really take off. The, uh, the other application that we see um, that has a lot of potential is in the, the lighting and the display industries. Um, again, where the quantum dots are displacing phosphors um, and many of which are rare earth uh, minerals. So they both perform better and have the potential long-term to be lower cost. So um, I think we've kind of you kind of touched on this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go into it anyway. It, you you've got this patented synthesis for uh, tetrapod quantum dots. So what is it about this um, the tetrapod quantum dots that makes it a disruptive technology? How is it different, and and what are <clears throat> some of the other new applications it enables? Uh, well, well, one really unique application that only a tetrapod quantum dot can enable is they can actually be used as strain gauges. Um, where that becomes important is in both uh, the nanobio as well as the uh, more commercial applications like composite aircraft, where the tetrapod quantum dots can actually be um, put into a polymer and then excited with a laser, and you can determine if you have any structural damage or movement in a composite part such as a, a, a composite aircraft component. These same type of strain gauges are being developed uh, for use in um, heart, artificial heart uh, components and other uh, biological applications where they need to have a way to measure if there's any strain 
um, really on a finite level. And so that's you know one very unique application that only the tetrapod can satisfy because it's actually the legs on the tetrapods that provide the reading or the measurement of the strain. Um, the other applications where tetrapods are specifically uh, advantageous are again in the, the diagnostic assay applications because um, in multiplexing, the tetrapods have dual emission. And so they're the only one that can actually emit in more than one color. Um, so for, that allows them to do a lot more in their diagnostic assay. This also uh, comes over into the display in the lighting market because dual emission allows you to use fewer quantum dots. So um, in theory with the tetrapod quantum dot, you, could, you can use less material, um, which reduces your cost. And then the fact that they have arms, um, actually they automatically space their self out. So you don't get aggregation. And aggregation um, generally leads to them extinguishing their brightness. So that it extinguishes their ability to illuminate, which is one of the main properties that you're looking to harness. And you've also announced a goal of producing 100 kilograms per day of quantum dots via a continuous flow process, which you've developed uh, with a group in the Netherlands, Access to Flow. What can you tell us about that? Um, well, uh, the synthesis process that we have a worldwide exclusive license from Rice University is very unique in several ways. One is that um, it uses all environmentally friendly chemicals. Um, one of the things that really continues to drive the cost of quantum dot production up is that it's an extremely manual process and then it uses extremely expensive solvents and uh, uh, precursor materials. So what the RICE people did is develop um, a process for making the tetrapod quantum dots to where we can still maintain very high uniformity, very high yield, which are very important for uh, the applications that we're targeting. Um, but at the same time, use low cost materials. Um, one of the side benefits of that has been that because the solvent we use is very benign, it's actually a solvent that's found in many um, shampoos that you can buy in the drugstore. Um, so it allows us to be able to have a closed loop uh, synthesis process. And that's very important when you're in a micro reactor because you basically have a closed loop system. So where other uh, chemical process for making quantum dots use these more volatile solvents that are not able to be able to adapt their process to a microreactor. Um, what we've seen in the industry is um, now that there's many applications starting to be um, developed and starting to get to the point of maturing to a commercial application, um, the need to be able to ramp up the production of quantum dots is, is still lagging behind. And what we've been able to achieve both with the rice chemistry and then the micro reactor process is to be able to really automate that process, take it from being a beaker line, which is very manual to a fully automated production process. And in, the, in, in that effort have been able to reduce the cost and greatly increase the, the volume production. And one of the unique things with a micro reactor is because your reactions are so small, we're able to still maintain high uniformity and very high yields. So with your mass production potential, which quantum dot applications do you think have the biggest growth potential in the near future? Well, clearly we think that the largest growth potential is in the lighting applications, uh, particularly in LED lighting. Um, that market um, is, you know, projected to grow um, astronomically as the LED light bulbs continue to replace the incandescent bulbs. Um, where we see we fit in there is that initially we can replace uh, the red phosphors with a red quantum dot and really provide a much more, um, you know, more efficient because it can reduce the energy consumption further, but also uh, lighting that's more pleasing to the eye for indoor applications. Um, longer term, we see the ability to eventually replace all the phosphors in the LED bulb um, with quantum dots. Um, so we see that as a very large market. Um, the nanobio market is already established. Um, it's predominantly being serviced uh, with fluorescent dyes, and we see that we'll be able to um, really displace the fluorescent dye market and replace it with quantum dots um, once our production comes online. And then, you know, the number of other applications are just... Um, <laughs> quite diverse and uh, all very interesting. You know, we clearly are looking at the display market and see it as a potential opportunity. 
um, but it has yet to really mature to the point of where it's going to uh, be in a position to consume large numbers of quantum dots. Um, but we are, uh, you know, we've had some meetings with uh, some display manufacturers, and we're certainly looking at that as a potential uh, another outlet for our, our larger volume production of quantum dots. And you've also mentioned uh, that thin film quantum dot solar cells will be the next generation. Quantum Materials has a wholly owned solar cell subsidiary, Solterra Renewable Technologies. What market is Solterra focused on right now, and why do you believe you will be successful in the highly competitive solar field? Well, I think the key to success in solar is driving the cost down. And, you know, we've seen so many solar startups fail because, uh, you know, they haven't been able to achieve low cost. Um, you know, the, the days of relying on subsidies to get solar, uh, to make solar a viable solution for energy, are, it, they're, they're gone, they're behind us now. And so, you know, we're focusing on bringing a product to market that can compete head to head with traditional energy sources. We think that uh, quantum dot solar is the only way that's going to be achieved. And, and it's, it's two pronged uh, approach. And that is the fact that we can have higher conversion efficiency than what they're able to achieve with silicon. And at the same time, cut the cost of actually producing the cells in half. And so that's what our focus is. And that part of uh, we, the reason we believe we've got success, uh, we can have success in that market is also because we have um, a worldwide exclusive license with the University of Arizona for a thin film roll to roll printing process. And this was developed by our chief science officer, Dr. Ghassan Jabor. So that process really allows us to um, take the quantum dots, formulate them into an ink, and then print them in a, what's a, probably one of the lowest cost, high volume production methods um, that exist and that's uh, been adopted from the, from the newsprint industry. So um, we think that those two technologies together, our quantum dot technology and our printing technology, really positions the company to be able to bring this paradigm shift in the cost of solar to market and uh, you know, to make a, really a, a dramatic um, impact on the way people look at energy and the cost of energy going forward. And finally, uh, last question. It was also recently announced that you've established new offices and labs at Star Park in San Marcos, Texas. Can you tell us about this new facility and why you chose this location? Yeah, well, we're really excited about our new facilities. Um, we're at the Star Park. Uh, it's a spin off of the Texas State University. Um, there's a lot of synergy for us there with other, uh, you know, either startup or, or emerging technology companies that have complementary technology to what we're doing. Um, but one of the main things that we've seen uh, that may, has made it really attractive for us is our ability to grow at this facility. Um, they've been very accommodating in being able to allow us to have additional space when we've needed it. Uh, we've got space there to be able to establish our microreactor production. And then the entire facility is situated on 38 acres. So we've got the ability to build a standalone building. Um, as we grow, we can grow at this facility. So there's a, a lot of great um, opportunities there for us to expand and also to be able to work with other um, emerging technologies that we see as complementary to what we're trying to achieve. And we've had a great deal of support from the, the, the local government, the San Marcos um, economic development people as well as the state of Texas. So we feel like uh, we're, we couldn't be in a better place for uh, establishing these technologies and really being supported by the local government in our effort to bring these to market and uh, have a commercial success. Stephen, that's all the questions I had for today. Was there anything else you wanted to add before we close? No, uh, I would just like to thank you, Mike, for the opportunity, and um, it's really encouraging to have the opportunity to put our message out there. Thanks again for taking the time, Stephen. It's a very interesting company. Um, lots going on, obviously, in, in the solar space and, and alternative energy, and uh, we'd love to, to speak to you again in the near future. Very good. Thank you. We've been talking to Mr. Stephen Squires. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Quantum Materials Corporation. Quantum Materials and its wholly owned subsidiary, Solterra Renewable Technologies, manufactures and commercializes quantum dot technology products. Quantum Materials is a publicly traded company listed on the OTCQB under ticker symbol QTMM, and you can find out more about them by visiting their website at www.qmc.com. Thank you.